What's wrong with this light in here? Hello, everybody. I've got this weird uh, light here in the background that's kind of bright. But anyways, um, we're working on candles. Mama? Yeah, yes, Sanaya. How can I help you? How can I help you? Um, my tablet is um, going. Mommy, you can't find it. Okay, well, I'm doing a video right now. And nope. you hid the tablet under your bed. Okay, your tablet's under your mother's bed. So you're going to have to go get it because I'm busy right now. <laughs> so I was to, I'm really bad about texting and sending pictures. So my daughter is so hyped about these candles, right? And she's like, you know, send me, um, send me, uh, pictures of the candles. Still ain't done it. So she's taking videos, but I wanted to show you guys our progress. Yeah, she's cute and she's smart too, but she's a hot mess y'all and that's that's the wee wee one sister that's the wee one who you just saw i usually have the wee wee one when i'm if i have a kid in the video with me so anyways so some of the things we're trying is you know today i ordered what is going to be you know this bad lighting makes my mustache look really bad or else i really need to go get a waxing <laughs> just thought i'd share that with y'all but anyways so um I just ordered a lot of uh, plain colored seven day candles because in the store we sell the plain colored seven day candles and we um, fix candles. But you know, a really good fixed candle to me, and it has been my desire from quite some time, is where the roots run through the candle as much as you can. Finding that to be a little bit challenging here. You know, um, so I'm going to show you some of the candles that we have in progress. We are learning, you know, just like anybody else, um, how to do this. So before we like put them on a website and make sure that they are going to work, you know, I'd like to give a representative sample and, you know, kind of show people what they look like. So a couple of the challenges with making candles, it's just not for the faint of heart. It ain't easy to start up and do. Um, and depending on what you're using the candle for, like if you use some white candles for non-magical work and if you want to mix them with an herb or a root mixture, you know, the remnants, I guess that's not a problem. I wouldn't, I will say that that is not backwards compatible. One of the things I teach in candle magic is, is if you're doing baneful magic in a candle, so whatever that is, whether that's uncrossing, something unpleasant, you don't want to use that candle the pieces of the candle again and there are really good ways you can go about being nice to the environment you know you can always just leave the herbs and the roots at the crossroad um what i do is i usually rinse any candle glass that i'm not going to reuse um out and put it in my recycling bin and send it on its way because you can't leave the candle glass in the middle of the crossroads people sometimes we have to make adaptions sometimes in certain uh, religions and traditions you can't make adaptions and those are the exceptions like when you're sending something through water which you would try not to have to do that often um but there are some specific rules that say that you it's kind of environmentally unfriendly. So pick your spell work carefully. Um, you know, those types of things where you're putting things in the earth and when you're putting things in the water should be biodegradable as an offerings for your spirits. Or, you know, and you got to put something, something as what we call fuck shit in the water. You better be doing it for a damned good reason. I'm not the priestess that's going to tell you that it's okay to sacrifice a melon to the Loa. Okay, I just want people to be responsible because we've had so much irresponsibility <clears throat> on our planet that the little spell work that some of us may pollute the environment with now makes a difference. Whereas it didn't before because they weren't fucking up the planet like this. So that's my personal spin. Love me, hate me. I don't care what you think. Anyways, so um, so some of the stuff that we're working on, some of the stuff that I really hope I can provide one of the things you want to do when you're in business is do a cost analysis because I could tell you right now that the seven day candles that we pour are going to be a little bit more than what we've bought in the past because those are made by machines. They're not hand poured. They don't, um, you know, we really, one of the things we're always going to do is we're going to make sure that the wick is in the middle of your seven day candle or any candle for that matter so that it burns properly because sometimes a really crappy candle with a miscentered wick will distort your reading 
may make the candle even explode. So what you want to do is you want to do a process of elimination with spell work and make sure that whoever you're buying your stuff from, that you have a quality candle, okay? And so people who do this, and there's lots of people who do do this, and I think a lot of them are awesome. Um, you know, Thina Nelson, I'm still going to get some of her figural candles because some stuff, I just, it's not my thing. Um, but what I wanted to do with my fixed candles is to make them my fixed candles. And I had a philosophical issue with whether I could do that with somebody else's product, you know, following, following the quote unquote commercialized traditional way of fixing a candle. You're not, you can't get that poker or that bamboo skewer all the way down in the candle often people don't work their candles during the spell work, which is kind of dumb to me because I might be able to add a few more herbs, add a few more oils, observe what's going on with um, the candle. So one of the things that I find we find to be most useful is that you have a semi, because this is challenging, even distribution of herbs and roots and oils within the candle. One of the things people are going to notice, though, when you have a fixed candle um, and you're doing a herb mixture, what I've noticed, especially with the very best candles, is you don't see a whole lot of herbs. You have some herbs. And so in testing these, we're going to have to say, okay, if we do it like this, like we wanted to do it, is that balance of herbs and roots going to set the candle on fire? Now, you know, we eliminate how we do it in our process, um, and we are, we were able to execute that candle the same way each time. That's why you make samples. Then I'd feel rest assured. Okay, good for magical use. Um, because then anything after that that pops off is you know your reading. Um, so it's and I was reading about this just from general candle makers that like to put lavender and things like that in candles. You've got to have a balance of how many herbs, roots, and oils you have in here. Because you'll go from having a candle to having a, a damn cherry bomb, a fire hazard. <laughs> so this is not, that's why people are like, when are you going to put them up? When are you put them up? I'm like, um, damn, when I make sure they cool? Because I don't want to hear y'all burnt your damn house down with these candles. Still wouldn't be my fault for entertainment purposes only. But you want to make sure that the product is going to work in the way that it's supposed to work. I hate when people... And it seems like they do this a lot with software companies, even though there's like procedures to do quality assurance. It's like they do the update and just sent it out and said, the fuck. And didn't really pay attention to the fine details that could cause problems later. But then that keeps developers employed because they can keep making upgrades. Not the same in magic or root work. So you want to. You know, I talk about all the, I talk about this and a lot more in my candle magic class when it comes to safety. In tradition, you know, a seven day candle has to burn for seven days, undisturbed in most cases. So what can you do to safely accomplish that? And the answer for some people may be, no, I'll have to pay someone else to set the light for me. So just depends. Okay. So, right. You know, you got to watch what you're putting in the candles too. I mean, really, it's just like anything else. Just like what you got to watch what you put in a er root and herb mixture because, there is a very small, unlikely, but small chance that you can make an herb root combination by, by itself is harmless, but combined creates some type of chemical reaction. So you always have to figure that out before you're doing it. Most uh, herbs and root work are benign, and the ones that are not are what ones you want to put on your body any goddamn way. So this was our first failure. We'll be burning these ourselves at home. Um, <clears throat> mistakes I made. Well, I didn't have a releasing agent. I didn't see that this was going to cave in. This is ideally supposed to be the bottom of the candle, too. So that looked like hot garbage. And that's not something I'd send to anybody. But we're sure going to burn them or melt the wax back down and re-pour them and, and see, you know, from there. Now, one thing that we pre feel pretty good about is the... uh at wax melts. Now, one of the things that I would have preferred, but physics, um, you know, is that the that the roots would float a little bit in the middle like the soap 
didn't do it so like that in wax. But, you know, I think that at some point you got to decide between looks and what you want to work. So, you know, the new age people call this aromatherapy. Um, it's, it's each one of these herbs and roots have medicinal and spiritual purposes. So this is the anti, um, depression and anxiety rise up. And so you could choose to put roots down on the bottom or put the wax up at the top. But what we're finding out with these is if you want a, an aromatherapy experience and you don't want to use chemicals, you want to use uh, for the most part, 90% fragrance, I mean, uh, essential oils. And the, the few fragrance oils that we actually have to use are made, they're plant-based. So they're naturally derived fragrance oils. So you want to have, you know, something that's not made by things you can't pronounce. So essential oils are expensive as hell. And we're finding that we have to put quite a bit in here to get the, the smell that we want, that... And I think that's because people have become so used to uh, commercial uh, chemical people who have put these out. And those things will be so strong, they'll burn the hairs in your nose. So, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're testing these and making sure they live up to expectations. And then we'll pour more of them in any of the formulations that you guys want. But keep in mind that these will probably only be done once a week. So maybe make your order a little bit slower. And, um... And then this is what well, the poured seven day candles is plain yellow. What I love about it is its brightness. I really do like that. I could control that by putting more of the wax based dye in it if I wanted to. Um, you know, and these are safer things like this. I wouldn't use that type of dye in a body product per se. Okay. But safe to use in something like this. And so we have these wick holders, but we only bought two. And these are pretty genius to make sure that the wick stays down in the middle of the candle. This one seems to be a little off. And sometimes that happens when you're not looking at them as the wax in them adjust. So what I would do is I would melt that down a little bit more and straighten out that wick. I wouldn't send something like that to someone. And then over here, we still have sitting in the molds because they're still kind of soft are fixed votives. Not only are there roots on top, there are roots on the very bottom, and there's some as much as we could integrate. You know, we had to stop trying to stir after a while because then you would put patterns in the uh, wax that were undesirable. So, you know, we got those. I'm pretty pretty good on these. As soon as I can feel comfortable to pull out these pins and put in the wicks, burn one, um, I think it's got a sufficient amount of fixing to it where you can, you know, work your magic and get your reading. What I find is good votas stay lit for like 15 hours, though. So if you're going to work something like this, you do maybe a, do it on a weekend or something like that, where you are going to, if you don't feel comfortable. But like that cage that I bought for Rikia this weekend, that peacock cage from um, Pier 1, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at the pictures. If you have your own bathroom, you could put them in that cage and... You know, close the door, close the door to your bathroom and safely keep them burning. So, you know, it's all on you. <laughs> Pacifier is not part of the collection. Um, so, um, I just wanted to show you guys this. Now, what I don't like... Oh, I'm going to turn the camera back around so you can see what I'm talking about. Is the opacity of the wax. Um, you know, because real good paraffin candles won't leave a film at all. But... Uh, that can make a film reading on these hard to read. So the next batch that I'm, I'm going to sell these, but the next batch that I'm going to do is I'm going to order uh, something that is advertised as clear paraffin. There's one from one of my suppliers. We got this at the local soap and candle shop. And you know what? He caters to a lot of home crafters. He def definitely doesn't cater to spiritualists because I was encouraged when it was really bright and translucent this afternoon. But, and you know, these candles are fine. I mean, they can be worked. They're, you know, par pure paraffin. It's just that they're not as refined. And I like refined paraffin because it really creates for a clearer read on a candle. But we bought these and we're going to sell them. Okay, we might sell them for a little bit less than what we do the future ones. Just so that, you know, they can be purchased and used and not wasted. Or we can melt it down and figure it out and other things. Because everybody's screaming about these. 
So <laughs> let me get five minutes. I've been working on communications for the goddess retreat in Haiti and for potential initiates. So I haven't had a chance to um, put anything on the website. But I just want to tell you, you know, people always get mad at me because they'll say, I, you had this concept and you announced it and then it either really took a long time or, um, you know, uh, it didn't go up. And I'm like, well, that's because I, I still got the stuff. I got the concept. I just need the time to write it up and put it on the website. Um, but with my daughter helping me, I'll be able to do that a little bit more. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's about it. Um, you know, just trying to see if, because there's two things going on here. One of them being that, you know, this is root work, personally and handmade. And I'll never get to the point where I want to automate this process. You know, hopefully I'll have enough descendants to help keep it going. Um, you know, so that's the one thing, you know, this is root work. If it's just, you know, a air freshener or a, um, a, a decorative candle, then this is perfectly fine. So that's what that place over there caters to. And this is perfectly fine. If you're, because most of these people will, for what we know, um, but you never know what these people are burning candles, not for a magical purpose. So, and maybe it's just because I've gotten used to the paraffin candles that come out of, you know, a crusader in New York and places like that. So, um, the ones that people get from, um, the original Botanica, um, they just look different, but in Haiti, they look like this. That's another thing to think about. So, um, you know, uh, if you look back to my videos from uh, when I was in, when, right before I initiated, you'll see the candles. And there are shorter, but they're big. They're really big candles. And I'm hoping to import those soon. But my mama also has a website, and I will put it in the comments or in, or in the title of this video below because she is the mistress of um candle making i can't wait to go back and learn more about how she does hers because they doing it old school for real though okay so anyways you guys have a great evening i'm going to go have dinner it's 10 29 and then i'm going to go to bed and that's this is probably one of the reasons why i'm a little a little thicker <laughs> bye